long before T'Challa took on the mantle of the Black Panther. His ancestor Bashinga became the very first Wakanda king. His name is constantly mentioned in both Marvel movies about the Wakanda civilization, and a spin-off series with this character is one of the biggest fans' wishes. Is it possible to happen anytime soon? Well, stay with us in the next couple of minutes and find out. But who is really Bashinga? And what are his powers? When did he live? Let's take a look. T'Challa, or the Black Panther we know today, is not the first one who protected the land of Wakanda. This remarkable civilization has a lot of history before, and T'Challa is only one piece of it. However, his first entry into Marvel Cinematic Universe in 2016 was praised by all of the fans. Comic book lovers were thrilled that this character finally entered the MCU movie world. The main corporate who brought the Black Panther character to the throne was Chadwick Boseman, who, after playing the Wakanda Protector in Captain America Civil War, also took the role in 2018's Black Panther solo movie. Now, when he is not among us, his legacy still lives. Last year's sequel, Wakanda Forever, is something that fans are still talking about. Until now, the movie made a revenue of over 831 million worldwide and has a 7.2 rating on IMDb and a perfect 94% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. However, fans are still constantly talking about Bashinga. And why is this character so important to Wakanda's legacy? Even though many think he is the first ever Black Panther, he is not. Bashinga is the first ever King of Wakanda, and the other title belongs to somebody else. That's Mosey, the man chosen by the goddess Bast to join the prehistoric Avengers team. Now you can really see how big of a story we're talking about. But Bashinga is the second in this row. He is an heir of Mosey, who, after his death, had a vision of a great meteorite full of intense energy landing in Wakanda and causing a cataclysmic chain reaction. He will step up and protect his homeland. To do this, Bashinga will forge two weapons, Skybreaker and the Spear of Bashinga, made of pure vibranium and will manage to absorb the whole energy from the meteorite and throw it into the heart of Wakanda. This heroic deed will crown him as the first Wakanda king, and also the next Black Panther. And not just he managed to protect his land and civilization, but he also managed to unite Wakanda tribes. Before him, the people from Wakanda were divided into several tribes that were constantly at war. Bashinga will put an end to this madness, He's not just a guy with superpowers, but more like a spiritual superhero, a spiritual shaman, exactly said. His greatest asset is his technical advancement and physical characteristics, which are constantly improving. And how exactly did he become the next Black Panther? Well, after absorbing the energy from the meteorite and saving Wakanda, he will have another vision from the goddess, Bast, which will lead him to the heart-shaped herb. After consuming the herb and being granted the powers of the panther god, Bashinga will become the Black Panther and hit that like button below the video right now. No, really. After becoming a Black Panther, Bashinga will manage to unite the kingdom of Wakanda. The herb will make him extraordinarily strong and can move at superhuman speeds. Under his leadership, Wakanda tribes will form a confederation that will last for thousands of years. And why is Bashinga so mentioned in both Marvel movies? Well, T'Challa and his family are his descendants, Mosey, Bashinga, T'Challa. And now, even without Chadwick Boseman's character, Wakanda civilization still lives on. Yes, it's sad we lost the one who made Black Panther great again, but his legacy had to live on, and the best way to do it was with another movie. This is how Princess Shuri became the next protector of ancient civilization in Wakanda forever. And who knows how far the saga will go in the next few years. The next one could be Tusaint, T'Challa's son, who could wear the panther's mantle. But is it possible we could see something else between this change in generations? If you ask any of the fans, you'll hear yes please. And a spinoff about the Black Panther origin story is on the top of the list. And it's not just the fans. If you take a deep look, you'll find information that even Marvel is already considering this idea. According to IMDb, a movie for the first ever King of Wakanda is already in development. There are not any details about when it could happen, but it's obvious that something is simmering. 
the passions of the fans were particularly heated when the artist Sean Harrison published a concept on Twitter that is exploring the idea of a new movie named Bashinga, the first Black Panther. These ideas became a real hit on the internet just an hour later, and fans were thrilled. I think that even Marvel's head chief Kevin Feige will not be indifferent to astonishing art material like this. Just take a look and you'll find out why. So come on Feige, hurry up and bring these ideas to life. Harrison's concept also gave us an idea about which actors could play a role in the movie, if it becomes reality anytime soon. John Boyega is supposed to take the role of Bashinga and smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell below the video. No, really. Besides Boyega, Brienne Tyre Henry is chosen to reprise his role as Phaestos from the Eternals. Harrison also put the names of two music artists, the rapper Doji as the goddess, Fast, and Nigerian singer Burna Boy as the leader of the River Tribe. It may not be something that you can imagine, but you'll agree that this selection is not bad at all. Harrison's concept also includes names of other musicians and this suggestion list has mainly gathered positive comments from the fans, and not just names for the cast. Harrison also suggests that Misha Green should take the directorial seat, and Ludwig Gornison should take care of the music for the movie. What a great job would it be! And what kind of story could a movie for Bashinga bring to the big screen? We must keep to Harrison's concept, as we don't have any other clues about what kind of action the story for the first Wakanda King could bring. According to the artist, Bashinga will follow Wakanda as five tribes of the kingdom fight each other for control of the vibranium metal. This metal would have a central figure, and it could be a reason for a future conflict between Wakanda's tribes and the Mayan kingdom. Bright light to this idea was the information that Ryan Coogler, who already wrote and directed both Black Panther movies, is already working on a spin-off title. But later, the producer Nate Moore disappointed the fans by saying that this idea is put on hold for now. So we can say that so far, the idea for a spin-off movie is based on theories, speculations, and suggestions. Marvel has yet to consider all of these ideas and put them together in their own concept. We can just hope that this will happen anytime soon, probably after the studio gathers all the impressions from the last Black Panther movie. If you re-watch both of the films, you'll find out that Bashinga is already important for Marvel Cinematic Universe. He was mentioned in the first film when Jobu was telling his son Injanika about the origins of Wakanda. Here we learn the whole history we spoke about before. How Bashinga united the tribes and how he had a vision and found a heart-shaped herb. Bashinga was also mentioned twice in Wakanda Forever. First when T'Challa was buried with his suit, sword, and spear and later during the discussion that the civilization of Talakan also has an access to the newly vibranium metal. This is good enough for me that Marvel will try to make something with this story soon, and if not a movie, it could be at least a miniseries. Between Bashinga and the Black Panther saga, there is an unbreakable historical connection, and we better see this story next, before any other potential Black Panther sequels. Let's give Kevin Feige time to think about it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.